experts are always investigating the cosmos, and while they've found some great things, they've also found some things that were terrifying. These are the 20 scariest planets ever found. Number 20. Venus now, you might have thought that I'd just go into the depths of space to begin, but no, I'm actually going to start in our own solar system to show you how dangerous planets can sometimes be close to home. Depending on how much you paid attention in school or even what you've read on the internet, you know exactly why Venus is never going to be colonized by us unless some serious terraforming goes on. Our dear sister planet is a deadly recipient of the greenhouse effect. You know, that thing that Earth is slowly going towards apparently, where the heat of the planet eventually rose to such a degree that it made all life impossible in the worst way. If you want an average temperature on Venus, that would be about 850 degrees Fahrenheit, making it so hot that it can actually melt metal, and it actually has done that when we've sent various probes to go and study it. But that's just one part of the problem. The planet is literally inhabited with deadly gases that would make it impossible for us to breathe outside of a spacesuit, and equally as bad, it actually rains sulfuric acid, and the pressure on the planet is 90 times that of Earth. So yes, unless something really big happens to the planet, nobody's going to be living there anytime soon, though some have speculated that we could actually live in the clouds above, as that would provide certain things for us. But considering what happens if those colonies fall, well, yeah, we're probably better off. Venus is honestly a warning of what our planet could become in the future, all the more reason to protect the Earth and enjoy sure that we don't follow that path. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the sweet topic. If I told you this is the scariest planet in the universe, what would you say? Probably, but that's two photos. Which one is the scariest? And I'd say they're both a candidate for the title. These planets have both been discovered, and based on the details that have surfaced, these artists' recreations have been made to give us a vibe of what they may be like based on the data that's been shown. As you can see, both look like they are very hot, thus making them very dangerous and therefore kind of scary. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below using the hashtag Sweet Topic. Number 19. Gliese 504b while definitely not the scariest planet around due to the fact that it's a gas giant, and thus not even conceivable that we would even live there, it needs to be noted that this one is scary in certain other ways, not the least of which is its size. You see, this planet is actually four times the size of our own solar system's biggest planet in Jupiter. And if you think about that, Jupiter is massive compared to the Earth, 11 times wider in fact. So that means that this planet is about 44 times the size of our own world, and that's pretty big, and it's pretty scary. Yet, quite ironically, the planet actually has a very low mass, which has stupefied many as they've tried to study it. If we could travel to this giant planet, we would see a world of still glowing from its heat of the formation with a color that's reminiscent of a dark cherry blossom or a dull magenta. So at the very least, we'd have a pretty planet to look at. The problem, though, is that like Venus, it has a very high overall temperature of about 460 degrees degrees, so nobody's going to be living there. But what might be the most scary in the point of view of scientists is that this planet actually breaks the mold in terms of what they felt was the only way that planets of this size could form. Oh, and it should be noted that the star of this planet orbits is actually hotter than our own sun. So when you add all these factors together, we could admire this gas giant, but we're not living on it or even anywhere near it. Number 18. Gliese 436b if Gliese 436b sounds like another boring name for a planet, well, you should get used to it, because not every planet is going to get a name like Earth or Venus or Uranus. But don't forget, there are potentially hundreds of billions of planets out there in the universe. Not every one of them is going to sound cool. Now, if I were to label this planet, though, I would be sure that it would be called something like Hot Ice, because that's exactly what you're going to find there. Gliese 436b is a Neptune-sized planet that 
that orbits a red dwarf known as Gliese 436, a star that is cooler, smaller, and less luminous than the Sun. The planet completes one full orbit around its parent star in just a little over two days, and the Sun is a key part of the equation because according to models about the planet and the Sun, there's a lot less methane between the two than there should be. Now apparently the planet has 7,000 times less methane, and yet it has a lot of carbon monoxide. But wait, it gets even more strange. Due to its makeup and the things that it lacks, the planet has what is known as Ice X, or ice that's so solid that it can actually resist being burned up. And remember, this planet is really close to its star, so the heat is not insignificant. The reason that the ice endures though is apparently because of the gravity of the place. It keeps it so compact that heat cannot actually touch it. So you've got a planet that is not made up of what it should be, ice that can't be melted, and extreme heat. There's no way that anybody's going to be living there. Number 17. Osiris. To change things up, I'm now going to talk about a planet that does have a cool name, Osiris. It was named after one of the Egyptian pantheon. But just because it has a cool name doesn't mean that the planet's not scary, because it most definitely is. You see, this hot Jupiter-like planet is having its atmosphere torn off at more than 35,000 kilometers per hour by the radiation of its close-by parent star. The escaping gas forms an envelope of carbon and oxygen that follows the doomed planet like a tail. To be clear though, that's not good, because planets that don't have any atmosphere are going to be put through quite a bit. Mars is a great example of this, as it doesn't have an atmosphere, and thus is subject to constantly being pelted from meteors, as they don't burn up when they get close to the surface. Osiris was the first planet that would be discovered using the transit method, the first planet with a detectable atmosphere, the first planet with an evaporating hydrogen atmosphere, and the first exoplanet found with carbon and oxygen. And so, it's a very special planet, as you can see, but it's also through this method that we can tell that its atmosphere is being ripped apart piece by piece. Could you even imagine living on such a planet where you could literally see its atmosphere being ripped away? It would be a sight that many would want to see stop, that's for sure. Number 16. Gliese 1214b now I'm sorry, the cool break is over, and now we're back to more scientifically boringly named planets. And this planet is scary in the fact that it may have the potential for proving something important about the universe that we're not the only ones who have water. That's right, there have been found traces of water on planets like Mars or in moons where we can see ice caps, but it's a different thing entirely with this. I honestly have not found a planet that's in possession of full-on water, and that's important because based upon our understanding of the universe, we need water to make life. And so, finding a planet with water is vital to seeing if there's life on other planets. Enter Gliese 1214b, a planet that's currently believed to be a water world, and this might be a full-on ocean planet, one that even has clouds above it according to some scans. This planet also happens to be a super-Earth, meaning that it is larger than our planet, but not on the scale of gas giants like Jupiter. Plus, it also has low density, which helps to put it in a separate class of planet altogether. Thanks to the closeness of its own star, we're able to study it closely enough, and it's through that that we've been able to make guesstimates about what the planet is like in terms of its watery content. However, this could also be scary in that we might just be wrong. The process to look at planets from afar is not precise, and as such, we could be making the wrong guesses, but if we are looking at a water world, the potential for more discovery is still out there. Number 15. Cancri 55. Here's another super-Earth that you honestly won't want to visit, but why? Well, for Cancri 55, we're doing a bit of the opposite than with the last planet, because that one was full-on water, allegedly, and this one is, well, a whole lot more hot. I'm not just talking about the 3100 degree Fahrenheit temperature that would melt nearly everything that was sent to it, but rather I'm talking about how the planet is literally covered in lava. That's right, it's a lava planet, and because of how close it is to the sun and the way that certain things are composed in the planet, you actually see the lava very clearly because it basically shines in the night sky and says, yes, I'm hot, deal with it. 
Oh, but it does get better. Another side effect of the composition of this planet is silicates. Silicates in the atmosphere would condense into clouds on the tidally locked planet's dark side, and that reflects the lava below. So the skies would sparkle. Yes, they do sparkle as they showcase just how much lava there is in the planet. Oh, and because it's a super Earth, that also means that there's even more lava around than you may think. I'm pretty sure you're not going to want to go there at all, ever. But one more irony here is that there was once a lot of debate about what the planet was, and originally they thought that it might have been a water planet. Well, they were clearly wrong on that one. Number 14. Korat 3b now, I'm not going to try and justify the name, though, believe it or not, it was actually a little bit longer previously. This is where things get a bit tricky, because whether it's a planet or not is up for a big debate, and uh, has a lot of differing opinions in people. Not the least of which is that many feel that it wasn't a planet, but it was known as a brown dwarf. Brown dwarfs are failed stars. They burn lithium, but are not massive enough to generate the thermonuclear fusion of hydrogen and helium that power real stars. Planets? Well, they do none of that. The object has a mass of 20 times greater than that of Jupiter, but it's roughly the same size. It falls outside the range of planets and stars that have been discovered to date, with the largest planets having 12 Jupiter mass and the smallest stars having 70 Jupiter mass. Either way, there's a debate that goes on, and it's still very much going on today. It's said that it might turn out to be a rare object that was found by sheer luck, but it also may be just a member of a newfound family of very massive planets that encircle stars that are more massive than our own sun. It's only now that people are beginning to think that the more massive the star, the more massive the planet. So yes, as you can see, it is a bit of a problem, because if there are planets out there that actually are not planets but just failed stars, then that could mess with a lot of things classification-wise, not to mention the impact that they might have in terms of discovery and more. Number 13, Korat 7b. Now don't blame me for the names, I didn't come up with them, but Karat 7b is a planet that's honestly rather special as well as scary. It was the first extrasolar planet that was shown to have a rocky planet like Earth. And that's important because as noted before, I'm trying to find other planets that are exactly like Earth, and finding one with the terrain of any rocky kind is a good thing. But make no mistake here, this planet is not one that could be lived on even after they've figured out what it was and wasn't. You see, See, when it was first discovered, it was actually thought to be another super Earth gas giant that was 21 times the mass of Earth. But in fact, it was a rocky planet that was only about four times the mass and much easier to deal with, if you will. The catch here, and there's always a catch with planets like these, is that the planet is incredibly close to its sun. So much so that it burns with a heat of over 2100 degrees Fahrenheit, which is really stupid hot. And obviously, nobody could live or even survive there. There, nor would just about anything that was taken to the place. Still though, these planets are not exactly what anyone's looking for. They're just something that we can all hope will soon be narrowed down into something that could be worked with and thus make our own when the time comes. Every planet like this that we find could lead us to another Earth that we're actually searching for. Number 12, Jupiter. To set things up for a bit of a change of pace, we'll talk about another planet in our solar system that's honestly very scary, that being Jupiter. Jupiter is the largest planet in the solar system, and as noted, is 11 times as wide as Earth, and that's kind of scary in its own right. But then you dive into what the planet honestly is, and you see just why so many are fascinated with it, and why we are all wise to fear it. Key amongst these fears is the Great Red Spot that many know from school, as the place where a lot of gigantic storms occur, but that's actually selling it a bit short. There, gigantic means twice as wide as Earth. With tumultuous winds peaking at about 400 miles an hour, the Great Red Spot has been swirling wildly over Jupiter's skies for an untold amount of years, and we're all honestly beginning to wonder if it's ever going to stop. Some think that it will, but whether it does or not is unknown. Oh, and while Jupiter is beautiful to look at, you would not want any of those gases. The vivid colors that you see in thick bands across Jupiter may be plumes of sulfur and phosphorus containing gases that are rising from the planet's warmer 
interior. Jupiter's fast rotation, spinning once every 10 hours, creates strong jet streams separating its clouds into dark belts and bright zones across long stretches. So between the gases, the gravity that it exudes, and the storms that it has, we aren't going to Jupiter anytime soon, but we could go to its moons, which many have theorized could be a truly fair place to put a colony or even a station on. Number 11. Ogle 2005 BLG 390 LB. Yes, I know, that's a really long and really, really dumb name. But the good news for you is that this planet also happens to be one with a nickname, and it's one that you may just be familiar with, because they call it Hoth. Yes, that's right, as in the ice planet from The Empire Strikes Back in Star Wars. The planet is estimated to be about five times the Earth's mass, making it a very large, icy planet. Some astronomers have even speculated that it may have a rocky core like Earth with a thin atmosphere. It's distance from the star, and the star's relatively low temperature, means that the planet's likely surface temperature is about 50K, which is negative 370 Fahrenheit, making it one of the coldest known planets. And if you're curious, yes, that makes it actually colder than Hoth, according to unofficial sources in the Star Wars universe. One of the things that's also baffled scientists about Hoth is that it's a very small exoplanet, and yet it's incredibly far from its star. Usually, they would be much closer, and because it's not, it's harder to get not just to read on it, but to actually study it. And there are suspected to be plenty of exoplanets of this size out there, and if they're so far from their home star, then what's going to make them harder to find? The true question, though, is whether this planet is one with the Force. Number 10. Trace 2b. Now, I want you to try and picture the absolute darkest place you've ever been. No, it's not a trick. I don't mean the tone of a place, but rather the darkest place that you've been. Perhaps it was a room with all the lights turned off, or you shut yourself in the closet so nobody could find you. But regardless of your answer, the planet known as Trace 2b likely has your place beat. Because this is an exoplanet that truly holds the label of the darkest planet in the known universe. The reason? Well, that's simple. It barely reflects any light at all. You may not think of planets as reflecting light, but they absolutely do. And unless it's this planet, as it reflects just 1% of the light that it touches, thus making this planet a dark mystery to the world at large. One can only wonder what it may look like on its inside. Number 9. HD 8606b Next up, I have a planet that doesn't decide when it should be less hot, so it just finds a way to make itself hotter when you go to places that you think would be safe. Because if you get the lighter parts of this planet, you'll find yourself looking at a place that's above a thousand degrees Fahrenheit, and so you would think that at nighttime, it would get better, right? Well, wrong, because there's a weird issue with this one via a hot spot that basically doubles the heat of the planet when it's dark. It's theorized that this hot spot is actually caused by the extreme winds that are blasting like a blowtorch around the planet away from its star, generating shocks that boost atmospheric heating. Oh, and did I mention the planet has poisonous gases as well? Because it totally does. Number 8. TSR B1257 plus 12B. Now, I'm as tired as you are of these stupid names, but that's the ones that they have, so what can be done about it? The irony in this one is that the planet is actually part of a trio, and the other two have basic names via Poltergeist and its neighboring worlds, Phobator and Dragor. Either way, these are planets that I'm never going to go to, not only because of how bad that they are, but the sun is far worse. You see, this one is an undead type of star that's known as a pulsar, and it's really bad for planets that are near it for a basic reason, that it means the planets are literally being showered in radiation constantly, never ceasing. So unless you're amongst the undead hordes that will eventually overtake the Earth, you're not going to any of these places. Number 7. WASP-12b Another planet that's well and truly doomed because of the star that it's circling, WASP-12b would first seem like an unbreakable planet because it's very much like Jupiter. However, the problem lies in how close it is to the Sun and how the Sun very much is pulling the planet apart. The gravity that's being exerted onto this planet is so much that it's basically turning it into an egg-shaped entity, all the while slowly stripping the planet of its atmosphere. As we've already noted, that's not something that a planet 
it wants. Now it's believed that piece by piece the planet is being stripped away, and as a result of that, in about 10 million years, the star will literally consume all of it. Number 6. WASP-121b Not to be confused with the one I just talked about, because they really do have to have better names. WASP-121b is another exoplanet that has a lot of things going against it, not the least of which is that apparently it's shaped like a football. Well, that ain't natural. Another problem with this planet in terms of why we should be scared of it is that a variety of heavy metals actually escape the atmosphere, and due to this, it's making the planet even more hot than it was before. A literal heavy metal plane, if you will, and that's fun to say, but not fun to be on. Because this means that the core of the planet is actually even more hot than one would expect, and that rarely leads to good things. Number 5. HD 189733b Despite its terrible name, this is arguably one of the scary yet cool planets that you're going to see in this video, and for one very basic reason. This is a planet in which you can die due to glass literally raining out of the sky and then being blown at you by hypersonic winds. That's right, a planet where it rains glass sideways. What a sentence to use, right? But it's true, on this planet you're going to find a hazy, blow-torched atmosphere that contains high clouds that are laced with silicate particles, and when it rains, those particles become like glass. Enter the wind, which on this planet can blow about 5,400 miles per hour. So not only are you getting pelted with glass, you're being flung around the planet at speeds that will likely rip everything off of you until you're getting death by a thousand cuts. So who wants to go on the ride first? Any volunteers? Number 4. OTS 44 Ah, that was at least a little bit easier to say. OTS-44 is another of the brown dwarf entities that can't be fully explained by scientists, not the least of which is that it apparently emits infrared radiation at a rate that's unexpected. And the fact that it might just be a disk that happens to be about 10 times the size of our Earth. That's pretty unique. There have been a lot of people studying this, and as a result, there are all sorts of theories about what the thing is, isn't, and what it might grow into. Too. There are some who say that it might even become its own planetary system, and that would be unique for sure. Number 3. Pegasi B the good news here is that this planet finally got a name in the real sense. It's called Dim Idiom, and we should all be grateful. Scientists are grateful for it due to what it helped to make them realize. This was the first discovery of an exoplanet orbiting a sun-like star, the first one being made by Alexander Wolskin in 1992 around Pulsar PSR 1257. It marked a turning point and would force astronomers to accept that giant planets could exist in short period orbits. Once astronomers realized realized that it was worth looking for giant planets with the currently available technology, much more telescope time would then be devoted to radial velocity planet searches, and hence many more exoplanets in the sun's neighborhood would be discovered. Science, everyone! While that may not be scary in the typical sense, it's still scary to realize that we still don't have a clue at times about how to discover and classify things, and these scientific planet names are really done. Number 2. Carbon Planets Now, I can't confirm that this one actually exists, but it would be a fun kind of scary if it did, because as you hopefully know, carbon is the building block of life. Water is vital for life, but it wouldn't be put together without carbon, and there's plenty of carbon on Earth. But the question here is whether or not these planets out there are basically entirely made of carbon from top to bottom or pretty close to it. The Earth is actually not made mostly of carbon, it's a mixture of various materials and minerals. There are some, though, who are looking for these potential carbon planets, and one of them might be one that we've talked about before in Cancri 55e. Number 1. Rogue Planet Here's one that can be confirmed exists, and yes, it is a very scary thing. A rogue planet is, as it's called, a planet in which it's not tethered to a star. But what does that do to the planet? Well, just imagine a ball on a string that you swing around for fun. Now imagine that that string snaps. Where does the ball go? Well, exactly, in whatever direction it was aimed at previously. Now imagine a massive planet hurtling through space with nothing to stop it. Those planets do exist, and they're scary because they could consume other planets, affect other stars, and so on. Thankfully, none of them are heading for our solar system at the present. However, that could change. 
That's all from the depths of space and the planets that inhabit it. Do you agree that some of these planets would be absolute murder to try and live on, short of terraforming them? And which ones would you like to see up close so as long as you weren't hurt by them? Are there any others that could fit on this list? Be sure to let me know all about it in the comment section down below. Check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.